Hi, good evening. I'm John Moran, and we're here at Quantum Sound Productions with Manitoba Hal. And uh, we just got finished with a uh, another session of Sun Parlor Coffee House sessions. And tonight we have some very, very interesting instruments. And uh, this this here, Manitoba, this 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 thing's like crazy. <laughs> well, thank you. It's it's uh, I mean it's a double neck ukulele. Uh, one the longer neck is a tenor mm -hmm. scale, and the shorter neck is a concert scale. Uh, and that's really all it is. Um, they're tuned identically, except that this the concert neck has the traditional ukulele tuning. The, that's the, the dog my has dog fleas. has fleas. Yep. The tenor neck is the same tuning, but with a low G instead of the octave. So it's more like a guitar. Okay. That, and that, that, that allows a lot more soloing and, and other variations it's, for the it's, blues. This really sounds good. You're going to have to catch the uh, Sun Parlor Coffee House session with Manitoba Hell because, man, this guy does some wailing on, the, on these four stringers, let me tell you. Um, now this is handmade for you? Yes, it's custom made by a builder in Winnipeg Beach, Manitoba named Fred Casey. Beautiful and, work. And uh, I had the idea warm, uh, worming around in my head for about a year, mm -hmm. um, because I do a lot of stuff with looping technology and that, yeah. that I wanted uh, different varied tones. I wanted to be able to change the sound of the instrument without picking up a different instrument. You know, I, sure. I feel like Whenever you, uh, whenever I see musicians who loop, disconnect one thing and hook up another thing, they're losing the audience for a couple of seconds. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to do that, so uh, I end up talking to him. I was at his house uh, one year, this is about 2011, and I, uh, I just said, so how hard is it to make a double necked acoustic instrument? Now, if you're sitting out there thinking, hey, I'm going to go to my local builder and do that, don't, because their eyes will light up. They'll get very excited. And the knife they, comes out, so they'll, it's they'll quote you a price that you can't resist, and next right. thing you know, you'll find you've ordered one. I see. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I love the binding. Was that maple? Bird's eye maple binding? Bird's eye binding? maple. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful What's, maple what's the binding. top? Huh? It's a spruce top. Right. And uh, the back is walnut with uh, oh, nice. nice flame maple yeah. up the middle. Is that mahogany necks? Mahogany necks, yes. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. And, uh, and he's done the uh, the uh, the. Uh, Walnut caps, right? Yeah, on, on uh, the heads, on the headstocks. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I, you notice? Look at the uh, sound hole. Kind of reminds you of the old twenties, uh, thirties uh, radios. Yeah, we actually nicknamed the the Radio Sonic, and uh, <laughs> the idea, the idea was that I mean, it's weird because these little half lines that you see here in between the frets, they were supposed to look like radio dial markers. Oh, yes, and yep. this was that supposed to be the the tenor neck was FM, right, and the Shorter neck was AM. Right. That was the idea. Did you guys come up with that idea after a little bit of like Newfie Screech or something? Or was that... <laughs> no, no. It was just, it was kind it's of this idea, idea that, you know, like ukuleles traditionally have this sound like this, you know? Yeah. And I wanted something that was, that had that, but then also had this much bigger sound. Sure. And that reminded me of AM and FM, you know right. what I mean? Yep. AM was great in its day, it still is. I don't mm -hmm. want to be disparaging AM, oh, for sure. but it doesn't carry the bass or the frequency response. Right. So FM came out and it was louder, and you know, and that was the idea. I love that's a great idea, and, yeah. and, and it really works. This thing really works. It's not like something like you know, oh, look at that, that's cool, but it doesn't work. This, yes. this thing really, really sounds fantastic. Yeah, thank you. And you brought another one along with you, too. I did actually, made by the same builder. You want me to hold that? Sure, oh, sure. It's made by the same builder. This is uh, an all koa wood, okay, baritone. Like my favorite Martian. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it's an all uh, koa wood uh, baritone, and it's it, what's unique about this is that it's actually steel strung. So I had it, it we braced it so that it used steel strings, okay. and that's so that I could play slide guitar stuff on a ukulele. Right. But it's essentially it's a baritone scale uke. Uh, again, all beautiful koa wood, nice, nice rope binding. And who built that for you? Fred Same Casey guy. as well. Same guy. Great. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful work. Yeah. And, nice uh, ebony bridge. I, I like the graining of that. I don't, the, the dark ebony looks nice, but the graining looks nice in the neck, matches the neck and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's really well done. How long have you had this one for? Uh, this one I've had a couple of years, a little bit less than that one. Yeah. When you come out with the slide on this thing, I've got to admit, it was like, slide on a uke? Well, I suppose, you know, if you can do it on a three string cigar box guitar, why not, right? Exactly, yeah. But yeah, great job and, and the thing sounds beautiful. The guy does, you know, this, the guy that's building these things does a beautiful job on Fred these. Fred is, is an amazing builder and uh, 
He, he regularly takes commissions. Actually, that double neck, he's, he's built two or three of them for people around the world after they've seen mine. Is that so, right? Yeah, the second one went to a guy in Australia. Right. And I think the third is in Europe somewhere. Well, that, that's pretty cool. Now, we've also talked, uh, Hal also talked about being a little bit different on a ukulele. Um, not only is he different on playing the ukulele, but the pedal board. Now, you're usually used to seeing pedal boards in front of a lead guitar player, rhythm guitar player. Uh, some of us bass players do, but um, this is very, very unique. Can you explain your pedal board, Hal? Because that, that's pretty cool, and it works. It sure. really works well. It's, it's actually pretty simple, um, but it has a couple of tricks to it. The first pedal here, this white one, this is just a tuner, right? Yeah, uh, which everybody needs. It mutes the signal so I can change instruments. Mm -hmm. Allows me to change, tune my strings up. Then it pulls into the uh, electroharmonic soul food, which is an overdrive pedal. Right. Um, I've tried different ones over the years. I had a Boss Blues driver for a while. I really prefer this one because it has a, a much uh, clearer tone mm -hmm. with an acoustic instrument. Right. A lot of overdrive pedals tend to prefer magnetic pickups. I, I, so you got to kind of skew the gear to the equipment that's powering it. The next uh, pedal, this little white one here, is uh, it's called a re-echo, and it's a, an, a, a digital delay pedal mm -hmm. that actually can act as an analog delay. Really? So I flip a switch, well, it's an analog, I flip a switch, it's digital, etc. Then you can adjust the repeats the and the time. Exactly, and, yeah, right. the feedback level, all of that stuff. Right. The, uh, the gray one here, this switchblade, this is where the pedal board gets a little tricky. The switchblade is this, uh, an AB switcher, so mm -hmm. what, when I click it, it changes which way the signal goes from that point on. And the first path goes directly from this, so these pedals here mm -hmm. go directly to the Boss loop pedal. Right. The second selection goes through this little, uh, uh, I don't even know what color you call that, but it's, a, it's, a, it's my octave pedal, that does a bass octave. Okay. And that goes into the B channel of the looper. So A channel on the looper is the uke straight. Mm -hmm. B channel is the bass of okay. the looper. Yeah. And then they're fed into two different channels on the amp and EQ'd mm -hmm. differently right. so that you get uh, a proper bass tone sure. as well as Absolutely. the proper Makes uke tone. Total sense, yeah. Yeah. What and that's really idea. it. It's nice and simple and compact, um, but very flexible in, in its use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you've definitely mastered it. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It's Thank you. Great. The last pedal is this uh, Bespeco. This is just a start, stop, well, not a start, a stop pedal and a clear pedal for the looper. Okay. So th these one pedal loopers by Boss, they're really great, but without a separate pedal like that, what you have to do is you go once to, to start the loop, right. once to stop the loop, and then you have to double hit it to stop it. Okay. And in performance, that can sometimes slip up. Where, so I have this pedal here, and now once the loop is playing, I just hit that one and it stops. If I hold it down, it clears finish, it Finish, or like a little lick in between. The, right. Okay. Exactly. Makes sense. And that, that's basically it. Uh, so it's, uh, it took a little while to find the combination of pedals and to get it exactly right, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not too crazy. And you get a lot of great response for your, your the stuff that you're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I remember you that... Uh, Kingsville Folk Fest, I think it was uh, 2015, I believe. Wasn't I believe it? so, yeah. And, I believe that's uh, right. And it was kind of the talk of the talk of the bull, we call, call oh, it. Oh, well, thank and, you. Uh, I had uh, a great time, especially the set I did with uh, Ray Bonneville mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, uh, oh my God, her name is escaping me, that beautiful slide guitar player from uh, BC. She was uh, just oh, phenomenal. Um, well, we... We're both going down in flames there because I can't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyhow, listen, Hal, thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks for sitting in with Gear Talk. And uh, everybody, Manitoba Hal, you got to listen to his stuff. He's fantastic. And uh, check out the Ukes. Thank you, John. Have, have a good night.